So I have been watching the leaders' debates on television, the leaders' debates for this year's general election. Uh, painful is the only word. It is absolutely excruciating. It's a stage show. It's a show. It's all very well scripted. They don't veer from the script. There's lots of umming and ahhing because they don't want to give a straight answer. And when they're put on the spot to give a straight answer, they find something else, rummage around in their heads nice and quickly to find something else to say to distract from the question. The one I, the one that I've focused on, and I've made some helpful notes was one on ITV last week between Jeremy Corbyn and Boris Johnson. And again, painful. It is. It's painful to watch. That these two are the top of the heap is, it just makes, you know, I'm already worried about the future of this country. When I see that these two are the top of the heap and one of the two of them will be Prime Minister, it just compounds that worry um, and justifies it because, because you know, they're, they're just, it's just not good enough. It just really isn't good enough. Major questions are not raised. Questions like free speech, uh, freedom of expression, the kind of left-wing thuggery we see on the streets, immigration. They're just not mentioned. Culture, multiculturalism, none, none of it's mentioned. These fundamental, fundamental issues about our liberties, our civil liberties, never ever mentioned. The fact that 70-odd percent of the country, around 70%, depending on where you read it, wants less immigration, Never mentioned either. So let me go through some notes. And the first question that came up um, was on Brexit. And actually, I think Boris Johnson, well, Boris Johnson had a, a firm intention in mind when he came into this. He was going to mention Brexit on every question. Uh, and I think he did. I think in every single one, he managed to get out his mantra of get Brexit done. Um, so that's what he's relying on. This is what Boris has chosen as the Tory ticket get Brexit done. That's it. He's repeating it over and over and over again and he hopes that will be enough. So Corbyn's uh, response to this and, and, and uh, Boris is saying what you'd expect. He'll get his deal through. They'll get out of the European Union on this wonderful, wonderful deal uh, and then they can get back to talking about things like schools and hospitals. And that's uh, what Boris's message is very clearly. Jeremy Corbyn while saying that Boris Johnson can't possibly get his deal past Parliament um, and negotiate a new trade deal with the US by January, though I'm not sure that was what Boris Johnson was saying, his, his response is that he's going to negotiate a whole new deal with the EU within three months. So he laughs at Boris Johnson saying he's going to get his deal through by January and saying he's going to come up with a whole new one. Uh, by it within three months of winning the general election. He's then going to hold a second referendum on that new deal. And this new deal, by the way, will achieve absolutely everything he wants. He's going to get everything. It's going to be perfect. The EU are just going to roll over and give him everything he wants. Um, that's his plan. So within six months, within three months, he's going to negotiate that. Within six months, he's going to put that deal to the people in a referendum. The options being uh, you can take this fantastic leave deal that he's negotiated miraculously in three months or you can remain in the European Union. Um, insane. Insane. And, and he, he keeps pushing this, uh, we need to let the people decide. Who are you, you know, how can you not let the people decide? Three years ago, the people decided. You know, this is just such Orwellian stuff. A second question came up on is the union being the United Kingdom to be sacrificed for Brexit? And Boris Johnson, to be fair to him, was quite clear on this and said, no, uh, the union is more important. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn did make me laugh at this. He really did. He said, uh, well, of course, the union is vitally important. Um I don't know what his friends in the IRA think about that. I don't know what they think about him uh, saying that the, the union is in is important. Um, very interesting. Only one mention of immigration throughout the entire hour-long debate. And that was just to reiterate this uh, all problem-solving Australian-style points system. And I've addressed this in a previous video, which I'll link to below. Uh, the Australian-style point system doesn't work. 
you have to tell us how many people you're going to allow in under this Australian style point system. Uh, if you're going to let the same number that are coming in now, then what's the point? And when they won't commit to numbers, that's what makes me, that's what I think is going to happen. They're just going to dress the mass immigration up as something else and give it out under a point system instead of the way they do now. Uh, and finally on that, Australia is in dire trouble with immigration. So looking at Australia as an example of how to do immigration isn't... Um, isn't the best way forward to my mind. Uh, no offence to Australia. Um, it's actually uh, one of my favourite countries and I am very saddened to watch what it's going through. It's following Europe swiftly down the rabbit hole. How do we restore trust in Brexit? There was a question about personal integrity and this is a good one. Boris's answer was uh, we restore trust in politics by getting Brexit done. Yeah, we get it, Boris. This is your this is your mantra. Um, but I would actually say it's to tell the truth. If you throughout your career are consistent and truthful, even when it's difficult, that's how you win trust. No one wants you to be perfect. We all make mistakes. We change our view on things sometimes. But if you are consistently telling the truth and honest and open and even say, for example, if you've made a mistake or changed your view, that's what wins trust. It's lying. It's changing. It's it's uh, giving one opinion on Tuesday and another one on Wednesday. That's why people don't trust you. And that's what you all do. And also, by the way, evading tough issues. That also uh, grows mistrust. Why wouldn't it? If you won't answer a question clearly, why should anyone trust you? If you uh, avoid and, and uh, you know, distract from the really difficult issues that the people want to talk about, why should they trust you? They won't. Uh, miraculously to me, again, <laughs> incredibly to me, Corbyn said you uh, you build trust by listening to people and that real leadership is listening to people. And while I agree with that, that's not what Jeremy Corbyn does. He's not listening to the leave voting heartlands of his own party. He's completely disregarding and dismissing them. He's insulting them by telling them, you voted wrongly, we're going to hold this vote again. And we're going to have leave in name only or, or yeah, leave in name only or remain. That's th Those are going to be the two options. This from someone who says he listens. He's turned his back on his own heartland and then says leadership is listening. You, it's It's... I, I'm not crazy about the phrase, you couldn't make it up, but you couldn't. This is absolutely crazy. And what's crazier is that they think nobody notices this. You can tell, they think they're getting away with it. But the, the, the viewing public isn't thinking, what? You know, they, they think everyone is just lapping this up. They're not. The British public is not stupid. Anti-Semitism in the Labour Party came up. Uh, now, Jeremy Corbyn gave a response that you would expect, which was to lie. And he said that there, any instance of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party is rooted out. Uh, every incident is investigated. It's an absolute lie. There are people standing for Labour in this general election uh, mired in anti-Semitism scandals. But again, he gave that, by the way, of course he did. He gave that compulsory dog whistle nod to the Muslim Council of Britain and co when he repeated a couple of times during his statement that they would stand up to all racism. Uh, deflecting away, moving away from anti-Semitism and making it about something else. And as I say, that dog whistle to the Muslim organisations who know and are waiting on him to criminalise Islamophobia. And on that, they've announced, they did announce earlier in the year, actually, at their conference that they're going to hold a independent inquiry, <laughs> independent, independent inquiry into the rise of the far right. Um, this will include anyone who dares to speak ill of Islam or mass immigration. And the inquiry will probably be led by people from the Muslim Council of Britain or somewhere similar. And I'm not actually joking when I say that. So he's, uh, of course, we don't talk about the reason for anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. And there are a couple of reasons for it. One is, of course, the rise of the extreme left, which is, of course, notoriously anti-Semitic absolutely despises Israel uh, and uh, the, the rise of the far left in the Labour Party is one of the reasons for the anti-Semitism. But of course, it's also the Islamization of the Labour Party. And this won't be talked about because if you point out that actually it's largely Islamic Jew hatred uh, leading the rise in anti-Semitism across Europe, 
well, that will be racist. And Jeremy has promised to fight all racism. So we won't be allowed to say who is at the heart of the rise in anti-Semitism, because that would be the equal to anti-Semitism, I guess. Um, yeah, more, more, of the, more of the same. Absolutely more of the same. It is truly, truly disgusting. Now, the NHS, and both of them uh, have the same answer to the NHS. And again, uh, in the, in the uh, immigration bluff video I linked to below, I discussed the NHS. The response of both Labour and the Tories is more money. Uh, we just throw more and more money at it. No discussion of how it's run, whether it could be better run, and of course, no discussion of demand. A doctor in the audience asked about the, uh, you know, this, this creaking pressure that is on NHS staff that they simply cannot cope. Uh, and no mention, no mention of demand, no, no mention of the rise in demand. I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss as to how you can discuss the provision of a service without ever discussing a rise in demand for that service. Um, I, I, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like a Lewis Carroll book. It really is. It's, it's absolute insanity. I do think at this point as well that uh, Boris Johnson said the way to help the NHS is to get Brexit done. Um, okay, Boris, we, we really do get it. Jeremy Corbyn said, end the privatisation of the NHS to some applause. Uh, and I actually agree with that. The, uh, the privatisation of the NHS is a lot uh, of what has gone wrong and, and why there is so much money is being lost. Um, massive debt, for example, uh, is another reason that the NHS is in trouble. And this massive debt and increase in privatisation happened under Tories or under Tony Blair's Labour Party. So don't let them get away with that. Both of them are proposing massive borrowing. Uh, Boris saying he supports business and Corbyn wants to destroy business. Well, that's probably the best comment of the night to me. Um, but invest, invest, invest. And whilst I do agree with investing, there's never again on any of the public services, police, NHS, even if a fire, council housing, whatever the public service may be, there is never a discussion on increasing demand. How can we trust people to run this country effectively if they won't even address demand for public services? How can we trust them? Uh, we can't. We can't. This two-party status quo has got to go. The monarchy came up. Uh, and uh, Jeremy Corbyn said it needs a bit of improvement, while Boris said it's beyond reproach. Prince Andrew was mentioned. Now, uh, at this point, Jeremy Corbyn did his virtue signal. And again, you, it's like the question on the United Kingdom and his, his fluffing it, saying, of course, the United Kingdom is important, while, while pandering to the IRA for years. Uh, and his listening to people while turning his back on his own core constituency. Here he did uh, this this unbelievable comment. He made this unbelievable comment where he signalled his virtue by saying that we must discuss the victims, the alleged victims, uh, in, the, in, the, in the Prince Andrew scandal, and nobody should be above the law. This from Jeremy Corbyn. This from the Labour Party, which looked away and still looks away while thousands of young British girls are gang raped. Nobody can be above the law, says Jeremy Corbyn, except, of course, Muslim rape gangs still operating with impunity all over this country in Labour areas with Labour turning the other way. It's still happening now. And he has the gall, the effrontery, to pretend he cares about victims of sexual abuse. It is truly, truly astonishing. Next to come up was climate change. Uh, both of them, as you can probably expect, both of them swallow the climate change hysteria. Absolutely, no question. Uh, there's no, neither of them said, well, hold on, we're only hearing one very specific side of this argument. There are many, many in science who don't believe for a moment 
that we are at the edge of catastrophe with the climate. Um, why, are, why are they disallowed from speaking at, at universities, for example? Why aren't they represented in the press? Why didn't the United Nations listen to a letter from 500 scientists on the day that Greta Thunberg spoke there, uh, saying there is no climate emergency? Uh, why are our politicians not discussing this? Why is no one in mainstream politics willing to stand up and say, hold on a minute, we are spreading a, a belief that we are at the edge, that we are a, only a decade or so away from obliteration. And this is allowed to be mainstream commentary and anyone who says, hold on a minute, this is getting hysterical, let's look at the science from all sides, let's look at the actual science, um, is, is, is dismissed as a crank. This is, this is crazy, this is upside down world. And Boris Johnson is just as bad as Jeremy Corbyn on this. There's no, uh, there's, there's no difference. There's no one in it really saying it. No one really uh, demanding a proper, sane discussion on this. They're all hook, line and sinker, climate change, hysteria. It's extremely, extremely troubling. Uh, finally, they were asked what Christmas present they would give each other. Uh, and I, I, it, uh, uh, the Scrooge story is what Jeremy Corbyn said he would give to Boris Johnson. And Boris Johnson, in return, said rather unimaginatively he would give Bo uh, Jeremy Corbyn a copy of his um, withdrawal agreement from the European Union. Well, I would give Jeremy Corbyn an Economics for Dummies book, perhaps, because uh, free stuff... Uh, not, uh, it doesn't work, Jeremy, uh, and I'm not sure as many people are falling for it as you seem to think they are. Uh, I'm not sure what I would give Boris Johnson. Perhaps a guidebook to conservatism might help. Uh, any case, that's that's my uh, review of the leaders' debate. If you despair as much as I do when you watch these things, please don't, and know that there is better coming. There is a brighter future than this. If you want to be part of that brighter future, check out For Britain and join us. We are the future this country needs.